In Colorado and all across the country, hostility towards school staff and administrators has escalated. Well, now the U.S. Justice Department is investigating threats and harassment of educators. There has been a rise in threats over the mask mandates and school curriculum. Well, CBS4 investigator Brian Moss reporting tonight on one case in Colorado that rattled school board members and sparked a criminal investigation. Science is not fact. School board meetings have changed. I quit your policies. I quit your trainings. Board members are now berated. Do something. Be a leader. Vilified for everything from mask mandates to classroom content. Calling me a Nazi or contributing to rape culture in schools by masking students. I mean, those things are profoundly painful to me. With two kids in the Jeffco school system, Stephanie Schooley ran for and won a school board seat in 2019 right before things got ugly. I did not anticipate that happening, and it was it was a surprise to me. This summer, Schooley and other board members got this anonymous letter, which included a picture of her home. We live in your community, said the letter. We are not concerned with the efficacy of masks or vaccines, only the rights of Jeffco parents to send their children to school while choosing for themselves what's best for their families. The writer urged Schooley to change Jeffco's school mask policy. We expect you to stand up for our rights. Please do the right thing. The intention was to intimidate and to make me feel unsafe and scared. And what we then find is we get these letters that we had no idea. So from now on, you now know it needs to stop. At a subsequent board meeting, Schooley broke down about what she called a veiled threat. Please leave my family out of this. A police investigation was launched to find out who was behind the letters and if they broke the law. It's gone too far. Who wrote those letters? Oh, I wrote those letters. Yeah, that was me. You wrote those letters? Yep. It was apparently fingerprints on the letters that led investigators to David Morrill, a parent and anti-mask advocate, who explained to me why he sent unsigned letters. So it wasn't just me. I didn't, want, I, didn't, I didn't want them to think that I was just speaking for myself. What were you trying to prove by taking pictures of their house and then sending them pictures of their own homes? Well, again, that we all live in the same neighborhood, that I was actually there, that I cared enough to want to speak to them personally. Morrill acknowledges he never spoke to a single board member in person at their homes. You don't see going to the school board members' homes and taking pictures of their homes and sending those to them as being over the line or a bit of an invasion? No, no, I don't think so. I, I, didn't, I certainly didn't see it that way at the time. It's unfortunate that, that they feel that way. Prosecutors have now dropped the case, saying they could not meet their burden of proof. Schooley says if she knew this was the kind of thing an unpaid school board member would face, she might not have run. But we have gotten to a place where we have lost any sort of moral compass around how we behave toward one another as human beings, as parents, as neighbors. I'm Brian Moss, covering Colorado First.